Okay, if you're ready, we can start. Yes. This is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System taking place at Ross IELTS Academy. The candidate is Malihe Etesami. The candidate number is 91313459. The examiner is Samson Sees. Examiner number 443533. Good afternoon. My name is Samson. Would you please tell me your full name? Good afternoon. My full name is Segeda Malihe Etesami. Thank you. And can I see your identification, please? Yes, sure. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, let's get started. In the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. Who is your best friend? Uh, to speak honestly, my sister is uh, my best friend because we were roommates for several years. And uh, we can share several things together and we have a lot in common. Okay. And are you still friends with people from your childhood? Uh, I suppose one or two of them uh, I am still friends with. And uh, we are still friends and we have a close relationship because uh, we had a lot of memories together. And uh, we can share these memories while we gather together. Okay, and do you prefer spending time with family or friends? Uh, I prefer both of them. Uh, sometimes my family is my uh, my family is my best companion, uh, especially at weekends and when I want to go uh, on a trip. But sometimes I want to just hang out with my friends, and it uh, sounds uh, more fascinating rather than my families. Okay, good. Now let's talk about. Television programs. Where do you usually watch TV programs or shows, and why? Um, I usually watch TV programs uh, at at home, uh, but I'm not really fond of TV channels and TV programs, and I uh, prefer to um, actually spend my time on other things like reading books and watching movies uh, on my laptop or cell phone. Okay, and what's your favorite TV program or movie, and why? I'm really keen on sport programs, and I love to uh, watch competitions, especially soccer games, and also boxing. Okay, and are there any TV programs or shows you don't like watching, and why? Reality shows are not uh, that much fascinating to me. Uh, I believe that uh, they're not. Real and they just uh, want to fake some things or persuade people that these are real shows. So I'm not uh, into reality shows. Right. And do you think you will watch more TV or fewer TV programs or shows in the future, and why? I anticipate that um, I won't um, actually watch more uh, TV programs in future. Because uh, I want to have a baby, and I uh, um, don't, I won't have time to actually to devote on TV channels and programs, and I want to devote it to my baby. Okay, and uh, would you consider watching movies or TV programs on your phone or laptop? Um, sometimes when I don't have access to uh, TV, especially when I am uh, on a trip. Uh, and uh, something that um, and a TV program is very essential to uh, be seen. Uh, I watch it on my laptop or cell phone. And do you get the same feel of it? Uh, when do you still enjoy it as much watching it on your device rather no, than television? No, actually not, uh, because the screen is um, not that much wide. And uh, when you, you uh, watch TV programs on TV, it is uh, wider and it has better resolution. So it is uh, more fascinating to watch it on TV rather than laptop and cell phones. Right. And what about cinemas? Do you like going to the cinema? Yeah, I'm really into cinema. And uh, it, before the pandemic, I had uh, gone to cinema uh, on a regular basis. Okay. Thank you very much. That's the end of uh, part one. The speaking. Let's go to the next part now. Okay, so in part two, I will give you a card with a topic, and you will have to talk about it for two minutes. 
you have one minute to think about what you're going to say, and you can make notes if you'd like to. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So, the your topic is describe a time when you started using a new technological device, for example, a new computer or phone. So, there's your cue card. There, that's the one. I'll give you the paper now. You can make notes. That. Okay, so I'll give you uh, one minute now to make notes. Okay, you may start speaking. Go ahead. Um, the device that I'm going to tell you about uh, is my uh, smartphone that my husband gave it to me uh, a couple of years ago for my anniversary. Uh, actually, uh, it was a very state-of-the-art uh, device and um, at first I was really um, amazed because of the functions and the, uh, all the things that I can uh, do with it, but um, it, it was so sophisticated at first. But when I uh, then I get used to it and it becomes uh, quite familiar to uh, actually uh, to work with it and uh, to understand the ups and downs of the device. Uh, it was amazing not only because of the uh, notifications of my cell phone that I could. Uh, be aware of uh, that for uh, using my device, but also because of the health function that uh, it has. I can uh, uh, be aware of the um, heartbeat, my, my heartbeat, uh, especially when I use it for the physical activities, for my physical activities and my uh, running courses. And uh, all these items make this device so uh, fascinating for me, and I use it uh, daily. And um, um, the uh, most um, inconvenient part about this device was the show, uh, was the uh, small screen of that. At first, uh, the tiny letters was so um, actually disturbing for me, and I can't use them. Uh, but then I uh, was accustomed to, uh, to um, reading them, and it was uh, quite fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's the end of this part. Right, let's move on to the next bit here. So I'll just take your uh, papers back. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so... Let's now uh, consider technology and education. So I'm going to ask you some related topics, uh, ask you about the related topics from what you've been saying. What is the best age for children to start computer lessons? In my opinion, the sooner they start uh, to get used to these devices, the better uh, functions they can use and uh, the better um, they can um, actually be um, more familiar with uh, these uh, devices. Uh, so it is very uh, good to use uh, these devices at early age, although in, uh, when they are toddlers, it might uh, suffer their sight and also their posture because, because of uh, staring uh, several hours of it on the screen, and it might suffer their sight. So I suppose that uh, at the age of four or five, uh, children uh, should start to uh, use these kind of devices. Okay. And uh, do you think that schools should use more technology to help children learn? Um, 
In my point of view, schools are an important uh, organization to uh, help children learn these kind of things uh, because um, parents may uh, not be familiar with the uh, state of the art technologies and devices and um, I, I suppose that teachers are better uh, people who uh, can take this responsibility. Okay, and do you agree or disagree that computers will replace teachers one day? I don't think so. I um, suppose that uh, um, talking to someone in person uh, doesn't uh, cannot be replaced by talking with computers. And when children uh, actually have ch uh, teachers, they can. Um, learn things better and uh, their lessons uh, become internalized in them better. And uh, I suppose that uh, teachers won't be replaced by computers, uh, but their responsibilities might um, somehow change in future. In future. And uh, for example, some uh, tasks might be devoted uh, to, ch to teachers and some of them to computers. Okay, now let's talk about technology and society. How much has technology improved how we communicate with each other? Uh, excuse me, would you please repeat? Absolutely. How much has technology improved how we communicate with each uh, other? Um, it has improved um, our communication to a great extent. Um, Several years ago, we, we didn't have any option to have video calls or um, we couldn't send each other messages and voice messages and these kind of things. But now people um, have a more convenient way of communication and uh, it's uh, all because of technology. And I suppose that uh, the rate of uh, development is going to be faster and faster. Uh, in some cases, um, technology might um, shock people um, in future. Yeah. Okay, and do you agree that there are still many major technological innovations to be made? Um, I think so. Uh, I think it would happen, yeah, because um, many, uh, some years ago, uh, actually, we couldn't uh, even um, anticipate that the technology will change this life uh, in this way. And uh, I suppose that um, in future, technology would um, make uh, more um, actually sophisticated change in our uh, relationships and uh, communication and uh, might um, somehow uh, we can send smells via technology, which is very um, appealing to me. And um, yeah, that's, that might be an example for the exchange. Okay, thank you very much. That's the You're end welcome. of the speaking test. Do you want to know what band score you'll get in the IELTS speaking test? Perhaps you want to improve your performance and prepare yourself for the real test then why not book an online mock test with us that will last for 25 minutes. 12 minutes of the test itself and 13 minutes of comprehensive feedback. Plus, we'll give you useful tips on how to make your performance better. Remember, all our examiners are especially trained by British Council instructors. So, we know how to help you. Join us. We're looking at uh, everything together. So considering the fl your fluency and coherence, your uh, lexical resource plus vocabulary, uh, grammatical range and accuracy, and then pronunciation. So uh, a, an overall band score, you know, we're, we're looking at a, uh, a seven. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we look at, we're looking at seven. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, I'm sure that's right. I just uh, had that on my screen there. Yeah, 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 we're looking at a seven. So, you know, congratulations. That's a pretty good score. Thank I you. mean, uh, we, there's, there's things you can do to improve and actually get an eight. Thank so, you. <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I know so. <laughs> Thank we'll, you. we'll look first of all, you know, look into your four criteria. Let's look into the fluency and coherence here. So, um, I mean, the way you were 
expressing your opinions and uh, being very conversational. That's, that's very good for fluency and coherence. Wonderful stuff. You kept the flow of speech and you were coming up with all these, these nice phrases like ups and downs. And uh, I mean, you did have some pauses here and there, but I think that was mostly content related rather than language related, which is, which is fine. That happens. Um, you had a bit of self repetition here yes. and there some self-repetition, and that can easily be uh, eradicated. Just maybe, uh, if I were you, I'd maybe do some more paraphrasing, maybe work, to work more towards your paraphrasing, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that would definitely help you increase one band's score. That's, that's all you needed, really, in this, in this part, because you, know, you, you, sound, you did sound very conversational. Your ideas were coming out, and you were elaborating on your ideas. Perhaps you could have been even given slightly more elaboration, more reasons for your answers in part one. Because um, you were doing that very well in part three, which is uh, expected of you, and you were doing that nicely. Um, it was just taking you a little bit of a while to warm up there. May I ask just, you some abs questions? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, in part one, uh, I have heard that we have to just um, answer in one or two sec um, sentences. That's true. I, I mean, you can, you can push that to three. In your case, because your sentences were pretty short. Okay. You can push that to three, a possible four. If they're going to be short sentences like that, you can have three sentences. Okay, you mean that uh, answer till we are stopped? Okay. Uh, no, not, not necessarily. They are short and simple answers. And you were doing that correctly. One of them was a little bit too short, I think. Okay. But uh, in the, rest, the rest was fine. And your long answers were in part three. So you were mostly following that. But this, the most important part right now, I'd say, is this part two situation. Make so, if you're running out of things to say, you can go off topic. Okay. You, if you're answering the questions and you've you basically you've gone through all those bullet points, you can go off topic or lie about something just to finish your two minutes, okay. and you know that would have been fine. You, you you would have got higher as well. So um, vocabulary, lexical resource. Uh, I thought it was. I didn't have a problem with your vocabulary in particular. I mean, it, you maybe you could. Uh, you know, use, expand a little bit to avoid self-repetition, a bit like the fluency and coherence. So, but it, altogether, it was varied and it was, you used complex words and they were all, they were related to the topic, which is exactly what is requested of you in, in this case. So that was very good. I wouldn't, wouldn't focus too much on vocabulary in your sense. I think you've got a strong enough uh, range of vocabulary. There's uh, another few things, no problem. Another few things we, we can go through here, like with the grammatical range and accuracy. It, it, this was good, simple uh, sentences and some complex ones. So you were using both uh, to, you know, increase your uh, score there. That was good. But, uh, you know, you had uh, something saying when kids get taller. I think you want to say when they grow older. So you said taller instead of that. So that was a little bit, you know, it's a bit of an error. In I said toddler. Oh, toddler. Is, yeah. is that what you see? That, yeah, okay. yeah, because of the um, Might have been act, because of the mask. Uh, somehow uh, I don't speak clearly. I, I know that. No, it, it would have been clearer probably without the mask. But yes. maybe you need to, uh, if, if you're going to wear the mask, and maybe practice to be a little bit more okay, clear yes. in general yes, as well. Yes. Um, you said here as well, suffer their sight. So maybe you want to say, maybe it affects their eyesight. I think that's what you wanted to say. Yeah. So that, yeah. If, suffer their sight. Is, maybe that's a grammatical error as well. I mean, you didn't have many. Like I said, you maybe you had two or three here and there. It's not too bad. It, it wasn't, wasn't something that was frequent. Um, pronunciation. This is probably, yeah, this is what we're talking about here because I thought you said taller when you said toddler. Yes. So, yeah, so this is maybe something you need to be. You are clear most of the time. 80% of the time, I think you're clear. Maybe some stress issues like uh, you said fascinated instead of fascinated. So it's a little bit, your English is a stress-related language. It's all about the stress. So maybe focus a little bit more on the stress there. Um, uh, and then you said sophisticated instead of sophisticated. So there you go. A few of these pronunciation issues, like and with the with the toddler, the toddler. Yes. Uh, so yeah, just work on these. Um, but altogether, you know, you did. Uh, I think you put on a great performance there. With, with all together, it was it was a seven, and uh, you know, you, you just about made it. <laughs> so okay. that was good. But you can you can really make that more solid, especially with the you know the pronunciations. Um, and stuff like that, and make sure you do speak for up to two. The examiner will stop you when you're talking for two minutes anyway, so you don't, you don't need to pause and say, oh, that's it. Yes. That's something that really shouldn't be happening. But because you were only five seconds off, it would have been unfair to mark you down for that, because you, know, you, had, a, you had a good uh, 
fair uh, two minutes, almost two minutes of speech there. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any uh, questions you'd like to ask me? Yeah, thank you. Oh, so it's very useful for me. Thank I'm you. glad it is, and uh, I wish you. you the best of luck. Thank you.